He's on the rim. Yep. You better pull it over, Buster. Oh my goodness. What is up, y'all? Welcome back. I'm back from vacation, getting some more work done on the DF Goblin. Uh, today I'm going to get the subframe installed, going to get the control arms put on, going to put the appropriate serpentine belt on. Uh, by appropriate, I mean basically the AC is deleted out of this, so you need a shorter serpentine belt. Talked about that in a previous video or so. Just gonna get right to it and show y'all what's going on and see what else I can get done today. Just a bit of advice, it's easier to hang the new serpentine belt off of the alternator and then use the socket wrench to lift this part up and hook it onto the engine at that point, rather than the inverse. Five rib AC delete serpentine belt, boom. All right, it's time to get this subframe on and it would be so much easier to do if somebody was in town helping me, uh, but I'm gonna have to find a way. I'm gonna make do with a jack and a board going across it to lift it up. Okay, got the front left side of the subframe. It is not easy to do by yourself. Basically, this hose kind of gets in the way, so you just have to pull this out and then you can send the bolt up through. It's really hard to balance this heavy subframe all by yourself. I've got the back end of it up on a jack right here, just trying to support it. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the other front side. H6 all the hay, I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball and age. I'm flipping the balls, I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the. Then you can see back under here, right there, the front engine mount and the rear engine mount where it'll come together as well uh, once, I, once I bolt the rest of the subframe to the chassis. The rear bolt here is actually the donor bolt from the subframe as well. Uh, but before I can install that, I've got to put the control arms on. And as you can see, I have not painted those yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick so that way I can get the control arms on. Again, it's just your uh, Rust-Oleum matte black. All right, so a slight problem in that I found three of the four bolts and clips for the control arms. Quick note to yourself, if you're planning on doing this, be very organized as you take the car apart. I have immensely appreciated it when I took extra time and extra care, when I took extra time to label what I was removing from the donor car and to very specifically organize it. It will make your life that much easier. And I know that's true for a lot of things in life, but whenever you're taking apart a billion little pieces off of a car and building a different car with it, and you need to know exactly what you're trying to look for, very easy. So uh, yeah, I gotta find my fourth bolt here. All right, finally getting the wiring harness system laid down into the vehicle. Just got the BCM all connected, which is awesome. Um, it's kind of hard to film this part and, uh, and do it at the same time. So I'll just update you after I finish making all these connections and kind of explain what's going on. Uh, but this goes up all to the dash accessories and pedals and, and whatnot, so yeah. And then the back of it will connect out here to the, the rest of the system. By the way, if you didn't know what the BCM is, it's a body control module and it supervises lights, uh, windows, security, all that kind of stuff. And for those of y'all that are looking at building one of these, DF Kit Car offers a wiring harness service. That's what I had done rather than me have to strip down and redo all the wiring. I, uh, I paid them to do it. Just a quick review on that. Just such a phenomenal job those guys did. Like the, the wiring is so well done that I almost thought that I just didn't have enough slack to get this stuff plugged in, but it just fits perfectly. So great job guys. Uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal results here. And now that the BCM is complete, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed against the front dash here and then get this kick plate installed as well. All right, this is the throttle pedal wire. I'm not sure why this extension is on here. If any of y'all know, let me know if I can just remove that. But it clicks in right there. Next up is the brake and clutch wires. For some reason, Chevy didn't make these different. So if you press the clutch and the brake lights come on, you know you got these backwards. So really the only thing you can do at this point is just plug them in and see what happens whenever you use them. All right, now over here on the other side, got the wire running under there, over here to the power steering and to the ignition switch here and there. And then this one goes to the boost gauge which I've got to figure out, whoa, almost dropped it, which I've got to figure out where I need to mount. I'm gonna see if I can get it. Okay, that's falling apart. I'm gonna have to figure out where that's gonna go. Uh, I think I have a solution for that. The boost gauge mount I ended up getting, I realized was for the analog version of this and I've got the digital. 
because uh, this is the 09 model. This wiring over here, as you can see, I just need to connect these guys. This goes out here to the, to the turn signal. Just red, orange, and green. Uh, I'll snip these guys off and, and crimp those things together. This one is the OBD2. Got a sensor here that I just bought. Still not sure what these guys are for. Maybe some dash accessory stuff that I've just completely gone blank on. All right, you can't see this, but the harness goes down underneath through the front dash right there. And I just connected the horn right here. Next up is connecting the battery current sensor here. And the rest of the wires here are for headlights. All right, so now that the front end is mostly done, I'm trying to route the back end. And you probably can't really tell, but it's a bit of a pain. You've got to take all this mess and you've got to basically route it exactly right through here over the clutch line and then get it uh, on top of the subframe and then it basically comes up from here. It'll route up right through here and connect to the fuse box, which sits right here on top of the transmission. Okay, now you can see the wiring harness follows right up through here, and then I've got it all sitting right here. About to drop the fuse box in, get everything connected. And yes, if any of y'all, if any of y'all have ever cloth diapered, that's what these are. Uh, we have four kids now, and so there's no way uh, I mean, that's a joke to try to do that with <laughs> when you've got that many kids. But I think for our first kid, my wife tried to do it. Maybe our second. But now they're shop rags. <laughs> Very absorbent. So I'm going to go ahead and get the fuse box set up and the rest of the wiring harness all jacked in and ready to go there. All right, fuse box plugs threaded and installed. Fantastic. Now I've got to drop in the ECM and TCM, which is here. Boom, fuse black on. And the starter cable is now installed, so it's time to put the fuse box cover on. Boom, just like that. Clicks in place. All right, I've got the upper and lower control arms bolted in. Right, both sides. Now I've got to get into the coilovers and get those suckers rocking. All right, the only real assembly you gotta do on these is uh, put these little snap rings in there and then put the bearings inside for the ends of the shocks. So just a snap ring for each side, uh, each side of each end. So there's four snap rings on this, but we're gonna go ahead and get it installed. And I don't actually see the springs. I don't think I ever got the, uh, it doesn't actually look like I got the springs. So uh, a little bit bummed about that, but maybe I misplaced them somewhere, but I'll just have to check with the DFK car guys. So anyway. Moving on. All right, y'all, that's a wrap for this video. I'm gonna have to end that one there. I had to leave town. I'm up in Boston right now, and I ran out of some parts. Basically, there were some parts that were supposed to be in there that just weren't, uh, that weren't shipped, so I just came to a stopping point there. So I'm just gonna wrap this video up, post what I got so far, and then when I get back into town, make some progress. I'm hoping that the very next video that I post on this in terms of progress is going to be me firing that thing up, getting the engine roaring, so uh, I'm a little bummed that there's a crack in that radiator fluid tank, uh, that reservoir tank. That is what it is, it's an old part. I, I needed to go to a pick and pull place anyway to get a bolt for that, uh, that rear control arm. So we'll see, it is what it is. Hope you all are having a good week and uh, staying nice to each other. Man, um, so I don't know if you all watch the videos that I post regularly, but uh, there was a video I posted about my truck and getting stuck and I was stupid. I'm used to my uh, my Sahara, my uh, Jeep Sahara, and this Jeep or this truck weighs like twice as much, and it has uh, road tires, skinny tires, and it basically just kind of like slid right off the road in some clay. Anyway, the video's got like 140,000 views on it, and man, that brought the haters out. The comments are just ridiculous, and some of them I'm like, I should delete that. But then some of them, I'm like, man, I should just let them be there so people can like correct that person. And I don't want to waste my time by just like getting involved with all that kind of stuff. Anyway, enough commentary. I'm up in Boston for a few days. I'm going to get back home for like eight hours and then I'm heading to Ireland. So it's going to be about a week and a half. And then uh, the week after I get back from Ireland, no travel. So in the evenings, I'm going to work on the Goblin and we're going to get it rolling. I'm so pumped. All right. Uh, yeah. Hit that subscribe button if you like following along with these builds, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.